Hey everybody, how's it going? We're out here, of course. Where else? <laughs> Doing a little content on a Friday. I'm burning the old CT ham here, and I'm burning a little bit of EMP. It's carried now by Peterson because Dunhill were dumb and dropped all their heritage tobacco blends. They still make pipes and they still do all that stuff, but they drop the tobacco. I don't understand. All right. Okay, whatever, guys. So, this is more or less a supporting light for the topic I wanted to touch upon today. I'm going to do a little backstory, but first, I wanted to give a shout out to Mr. Ken with lots of trains because he gave me a real hearty shout out in one of his last videos and he also made an interesting point to me that I never really thought about. Now he commented on my last video and he he uh, drew attention to my hat that I was wearing in that video which I'm wearing again today. Mm -hmm. He was very impressed with this hat and I, I wrote a comment and told him a little backstory about it. Well, okay, I'm going to give that a rest. But anyhow, so I, I, I thought, you know, I should do a video about this hat. And I thought, well, I might as well give a little backstory about my, how I came to this point with hats and vintage clothing and whatnot, because a lot of people might want to know, or they have, a, they have questions, we'll say. So <clears throat> back, way back when, in 1994, 93, 94, I really got heavy into 1940s fashion and uh, culture with the movies and the music. I was really heavy into the music, um, at least by 91 or so. Uh, the music really kind of took over. And I had a lot of interests, you know, whether it was the Gold Rush, Medieval Times, the Old West, whatever. It, it just all fluctuated. And of course, trains. I've always loved uh, railroad history since I was a child. And I've always been a hat guy. Always. I, I've always worn a hat. And ever since I was a kid, I loved the comfort of wearing a hat. And I, you know, of course, being into trains, my parents got me railroad caps, you know, the pinstriped engineer caps. Now, a lot of people refer to those as conductor caps. Okay? You know, the hickory stripe, pinstripe caps, the pleated ones. Well, they're not conductor caps. No, 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 no. I, I have to make this correction many times. They're engineer caps. Yeah. Or, well, a fireman would also wear a similar cap. But, yeah, engineer cap is the technical term uh, for that cap, to my understanding. Um, because every picture you see of one being worn is by the engineer or the cab crew of a locomotive. A conductor cap is something completely different anyway but most people don't know the difference i'll be fair i'll be fair in that they don't know the difference between a conductor and engineer uh some people call them train drivers no i'm sorry i know the english call the engineer a train driver because he operates the locomotive which drives the train forward i get that you know that's that's english Nothing against the English, but I, I disagree on that term because in my mind, in my understanding, driving uses a wheel, so you have to drive it somewhere, right? Well, trains don't have steering wheels. No. They have tracks, which takes the train where it's supposed to go. So, yeah. <laughs> Engineering is a different term, which I feel describes... Uh, the action of operating a locomotive because you don't drive it you operate it to get it from point A to point B and uh, so that that's my opinion okay I, I know may, some may differ on that but that's my opinion it's been my understanding since day one <sighs> where am I going with this oh right so yeah engineer caps so I, I've always worn engineer caps when I was a kid and then by the early mid '90s, uh, my brother wanted to. Uh, I have to actually give him a, a shout out, and he might realize this or not, but he definitely inspired me to get into '40s fashion. One year, he wanted to go as gangsters for Halloween. Well, he had a very garish 
colorful suit that he wore for church, and he liked different colors. And oddly enough, our church is very conservative, <laughs> so he caught some flack for this suit, but it was a kind of a lavender color, you know, kind of a, a gem tone lavender, you know, right? Or amethyst color uh, gabardine suit that he, he bought at the uh, Burlington Coat Factory, if I remember right. But anyway, it was the 90s, can be colorful. And I had a black double-breasted that I I got for same reasons to wear to church and everything. And well, I like the double-breasted style, so I wanted a double-breasted suit because I, I liked the 40s. By that point, I was really getting into the aesthetic of the 40s, and so I got that suit. And then eventually, I really liked the way that looked. And then a friend of mine uh, in church says, "Hey, well, if you like that, let me take you vintage clothing shopping." So he. He got me uh, out to some vintage clothing stores, and I had no idea that you could actually buy clothing from the era that was still around. So they just blew my mind. And being a teenager, I was like, wow, I could actually have the clothes that are from that era? So I got into vintage clothing through him, and that just went, you know, kind of like lanterns now, you know. It's just one thing after another. Eventually, I had a full wardrobe of 1930s, 40s clothing, and I still have quite a bit. Uh, and I wear them. Uh, we went out to uh, dinner for our anniversary last Saturday. I wore a beautiful 1940s chalk stripe double-breasted suit. And it was actually made by Oviatz, which was a very high-end uh, haberdashery in Los Angeles. They had two stores. They had the uh, Olive, uh, St- Olive Street store in Los Angeles and also one in Beverly Hills. Um, Oviatz was definitely one of the top uh, haberdasheries in Southern California. And if, in fact, side note, uh, the Duke of Windsor was known to hop the pond, if you will, and come and shop at Oviat's. Because Oviat, James Oviat, the owner and proprietor of that store, he would travel to England and France and pick textiles from there. And he, a lot of his cloth was imported, so it makes sense. And he took a lot of cues from Savile Row and everything. But anyway, um, So I wore this beautiful suit for our anniversary and a nice hat, of course. I, you know, it it, it came off great. I should wear the suit for one of these videos so you can see what I'm talking about. Anyway, for those who follow me on Facebook, you've probably looked through my photos. You've seen me in my 1940s kit. Anyhow, so hats kind of came in early before the suits. I had a couple hats that I I bought from a local costume shop named, uh, what was it called, Uh, Polka Dots. And I went in there and I, I found some 1940s fedoras. So I bought those and eventually I got the ties and then a suit came along and all that stuff. So it all kind of came together, right? Well, I love hats. I've always been in hats. And once I started wearing the old fedoras, I found out how comfortable and practical they were because they really do keep the sun off of your head all around. I love ball caps. Don't get me wrong. I have, I have a few and I like them, but they only shape your face in most cases so your neck is exposed so i have very fair skin as you can tell and i don't tan i go from white to red if i burn i burn and it doesn't turn into tan it does it just goes right back to pasty white so i have to be mindful of this my grandfather had uh challenged with skin cancer throughout the rest of his life mostly after bikini atoll my grandfather and my mom's side was at Operation Crossroads in 46. So he battled with skin cancer ever since witnessing the atomic bomb blast at the Bikini Islands. So I have to be mindful because I am his grandson. So I I like to keep myself out of the sun uh, uh, for long extended periods of time. So I usually wear a wide brim hat. So it's a practical reason. Also, I've just always been a hat guy. But I found that the old 1930s, 40s fedoras, even 50s fedoras, uh, are just, the quality is ridiculous. It's just unsurpassed. I, they, The more I got into this hobby, the more I learned, as with lanterns, the old stuff was made so well. And there was just a craftsmanship and quality people put into consumer products at that time that really has gone away, sadly. Um, but here I'm going to give you the little 50 cent tour of this hat. So this guy is, it's a beautiful shade of green, right? It's like a sage, it's like a pale, like a lighter shade of forest green, 
kind of sage green, right? It's not like Kelly green or anything, but it's just a real nice, handsome green. Now this hat, as I was telling Ken, was just a body. Now, in the hat world, when it's just a cone of felt, it's called a hat body. So it's not even a hat yet, but it's just the felt body that you have before it's blocked into a shape. So I found this poor rumpled up hat body at a rummage sale that Western Costume was having. They used to have a, an annual yard sale. So they would take out stuff out of their collection that was no longer serviceable by Hollywood because they rent a lot to Hollywood. Um, so they, they would take their pieces that were kind of threadbare, threadworn, and they would sell them off for cheap so they can recuperate some of their investment also purge the collection of stuff that they can't use anymore. So I was walking through this area that had a bunch of hats, and there's just a bunch of cardboard boxes. Well, I saw this sitting on top, and everyone's walking by it, and I pick it up, and I'm like, that's beaver fur felt. And that's what a lot of quality hat companies used at that time was beaver fur felt. So I'm like, this is quality. This is good. This could be possibly a, a, a Borsellino, which was a very high-end Italian hat brand. So I'm like, this could be something very expensive. At one time it was. So it didn't have a ribbon, had no sweatband, it was just the body. So I picked it for $5. Fast forward years, it just stayed in the closet. I did nothing with it. But then there was a shop that opened up in Altadena. And that would be Welly, uh, Wellama Hats. Uh, a friend of mine, Cody Wellama, has a hat shop. So he makes custom made hats. He also does refurbishments. And so I got to know him. And I brought this hat body in to show him. He's like, yeah, we can totally make that into hat. Here's what we'll do. I picked out the sweatband. I wanted brown because they use mostly brown sweatband, uh, sweat liner or, or sweatbands. Yeah, sweatbands. Yeah, in the 30s and 40s. Uh, so he put this brand new one in. And he also put my initials in there. Can you see that? RCS. There it is. So he made it kind of custom. And then we put a nice ribbon little bow at the back that was customary i didn't want a liner i didn't want a satin liner because i this is a very lightweight hat so it's actually more comfortable and more appropriate for warmer weather without the sweat band without the, the the satin liner but then i picked the the ribbon he had the old millinery so he had this beautiful ribbon and it has kind of a, a pattern to it a little tone on tone pattern action and it is from the 30s or 40s and it was not cheap. So, I mean, out the door I paid, I think, 150 to have this hat refurbished. And he blocked it. And, well, he blocked it open crown. And then I bashed it myself how I liked it. So it, it has my own personal touch to it. Yeah. But that's, that's more or less the story of this hat. And I will try and showcase ever so often another hat that I have in my collection that I like. And I'll give a little history about it. So... This is one of my favorite. It's definitely personalized, but it uses, well, the ribbon's old, the sweatband's new, but it, it does look like the old style. Um, but it's very comfortable. It's a great hat. And uh, initially it was a $5 hat. Now it's definitely worth a little bit more than that. But since it is, it has my initials in it, I don't think I'll ever sell it because it is personalized. Um, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that's it. That's my fedora that I, I've been wearing in a couple of my other videos. And uh, yeah, I, I love these soft brim. I mean, I can flip the brim down and be get a little more serious, but I like to wear it up a little bit. And you know, it's a little more casual and a little more personal, I think. And not so G-man, you know. Anyway, so that's what we're doing out here. We're just enjoying a flame. Thought I'd give you a little guided tour since... Uh, Ken asked about this or commented on this hat. I thought I'd do a video for him About this hat since he likes to wear hats in his videos, too. So there you go, Ken I hope that uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, I'll be doing another one with some more hat content of course with lantern support <laughs> All right friends you have a great rest of your weekend and we'll see you guys probably again on Monday. All right. Take care now. Bye-bye